All right. Hi, everyone. This is Megan Stewards. I'm with the Girl Scouts of Virginia Skyline Council. And today I have with me Danielle DeHart. Hi, Danielle. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Danielle is the environmental specialist for uh, the City of Roanoke Stormwater Division. And we'll be going over the Eco Advocate badge for our ambassadors, Girl Scout ambassadors today. It's 3.58 now. So we're going to give people a couple minutes to join. Happy Earth Day. And we're also celebrating it's Happy Administrative Day. And in the Girl Scouts, we're also celebrating our, uh, our Leader Day, Leader Appreciation Day. So Happy Leader Day. It's a big, big one for us. Uh, we have incredible leaders who we could not do our job. Or, you know, we're here to serve them. And we could not, as Girl Scouts, um, um, support all the girls without them. And yeah, so it's 3.59, we'll wait. Share what you're doing for Earth Day, if you'd like, in the comments. And we'll just give people a couple minutes. Introduce yourself as you're joining. We're coming to you from Roanoke, Virginia. Four o'clock, we'll give people a couple more minutes. And this will be recorded and we'll have it on our webpage. So you can always return back to it and um, access it later as well. It's a beautiful day. And I know that um, today the Global Climate Strike is kicking off a virtual Earth Day event from here until Friday. And then uh, locally, our uh, Roanoke's Ride Solution is hosting a virtual Earth Day as well. So we hope after you enjoy this interview, you get out there and get out there remotely <laughs> and see what all you can get involved with. All right, so we have Michelle Gray She's in Colorado and their senior girls went out and picked up trash today. Oh, that's, that's awesome. It's wonderful. Yes. Great job. Feels good. You're outside and I'm sure you can keep up that easily keep up the six uh, foot distance too. So I'm glad you all were able to get outside. That must've felt good. All right, we'll give people another minute before we jump in. Again, say hi, share how you're celebrating Earth Day. All right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and jump in. So happy Earth Day. Happy Administrative Day, Happy Leader Day in the Girl Scout world. Very special uh, day for us here. And in honor of um, Earth Day, we're going to explore the Eco Advocate Badge for our ambassadors. And also I'm Megan Stewards. I work for our local Girl Scouts of Virginia Skyline Council. And with me today is Danielle DeHart from our uh, Stormwater Division at the City of Roanoke. She's their Environmental Specialist. Say Hi, Danielle. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Happy to be here. Happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. So real quick, I'm going to just share the um, information on the badge. So this is um, kind of the overview of the Eco Advocate badge. This is for Girl Scout ambassadors or uh, high school seniors. So we're celebrating Earth Day, also known as Mother Earth, Mother Nature, because truly every living thing depends on nature to survive. So this badge is gonna help you explore what your priorities are when it comes to the environment. Uh, as an eco advocate, you'll talk to real life environmentalists like Danielle with us today, and then explore what issues really, um, you know, resonate with you from endangered species to destruction of rainforests. And certainly there's lots of local issues as well pipelines or climate change. 
And so you'll look into what's important for you, you'll find a solution and then work on you know, advocating for that difference as well. It's really exciting. So the five steps of this badge are the first one being learn what eco advocates do. So that's what we're doing today with Danielle. Uh, the second one will be then finding an issue you're personally passionate about. The third one is coming up with a solution for that issue. And fourth, advocating for that issue. And um, five, you'll then teach others how to advocate for your cause. So it's a really great program. So we're kicking it off this week in honor of Earth Day. Um, this will probably go for at least one more week. We'll do different sessions over, uh, actually, yeah, next week and the week after. So again, today we're doing number one. We're learning what eco advocates do. And so I opted for, here, let me scroll down. There's a couple options. And I opted to meet someone um, on your city council or a city employee and to interview them. And just a couple tips for preparing to interview someone. You'll want to Google journalist interview questions. I, my first one was just a general interview questions and Google shot back job interview questions. And that's definitely not what you want. And then um, also you want to make sure you have a backup whenever you're doing an interview. So uh, we're using Facebook Live and Zoom. And so that's going to give us a recording. So we'll, I'll, I'll be able to return back to that and use this for later aspects of the project. All right. So um, as I mentioned, Danielle is the environmental specialist for the City of Roanoke Stormwater Division. And we're really, oh, sorry. Let me cut off of stop sharing. <laughs> and all right. <laughs> Thanks, Danielle. So um, do you want to... Um, Go ahead and tell us a little bit about stormwater and why it's an important environmental issue. Yes, yeah, so um, thank you again for having me. So stormwater is a very important environmental issue because it's really the number one culprit of how pollutants get into our waterways, especially in an urban environment. So anytime it rains or even snow melt, any of the pollutants that are is in the ground can eventually wash into the nearest storm drain. And here in New York City, it's not treated. So it goes to our nearest body of water because it's essentially just to help with like mitigate flooding. So that way it's not street flooding, protect people on property. But when doing so, anything that's on the streets can get into our streams. So if you're not picking up after your dog, pet waste, that bacteria gets into our waterways, car leaks, so all that oil, antifreeze, all that nasty things gets into our waterways and so forth. Um, if you think about all the lawn chemicals you might be using, putting all those in gets into our waterways. So that's why it's really important to make sure we know what we're doing on land has an impact on our water. Absolutely. Really great points. So what inspired you to get involved with environmental issues and stormwater in particular? So it actually started with my sisters. So we all went to the same college together, went to Hollins University. So I'll just give them props here. Um, and then for my freshman year, uh, me and my one sister took intro to environmental studies and we had to do a final project of going to take uh, water samples. And so to do that, we actually collected little bugs called benthic macroinvertebrates. So now it's like kind of like really excited me to do that and got really cool and things like that because anyway I have like bugs here now which might freak people out but to me I like love bugs now so this is a giant stonefly as you can see That's wow. what it is. so like I started doing this in school and of course fast forward now I'm a trainer because the stormwater program has a citizen science water monitoring program which is very lengthy but we actually go out into the streams and collect here's a crayfish so they're important because determining like what we find and how many gives us a stream health score. So I was glad to do that in college and now I get to do that as a career, which is really fun. And here is a Helgramite, as you can. Wow. A lot of fishermen use this Helgramite. So if there's any fishermen or women out there, um, you might find that familiar. So that's kind of what my passion led me to. So glad I can now like play in the creeks. So. <laughs> that's great. Thanks for bringing those little, the creepy critters or not yeah. so I'm sure you don't find them creepy. Um, I, yeah, I don't know a lot of people because you're like, oh no, that's in my water. But that's a good thing. We want these in our water. So I don't want to freak anyone out, but they're good <laughs> indicators of water quality. So. No, that's a really good point. Awesome. So let's see. So how have you used your influence to tackle threats to our stormwater quality? 
So in Stormwater, I do education and outreach. So I do things of social media, we do um, events. And then, like I said, I was a trainer for this project. So we're getting out to meet the people, bring them to the streams. So really hoping that kind of just word of mouth travels essentially. And so if one person hears something to do good, it then enacts them to do something good in the water. So we have it here in Stormwater to leaving that clean water legacy message. So really getting that word out to protect our waterways. Yeah, so important. What are some of the challenges you face or continue to face in your efforts to protect our city stormwater? I would also say with that, the community buy-in for it because they think, oh, I don't have a stream in my backyard. So how is my house like four streets away or even a mile away from the river having an impact and not realizing mm -hmm. that that um, kind of inlet outside their yard, when every time it rains, it goes right into the water. So mm -hmm. not having that direct link and not realizing it or realizing they're in that whole watershed piece. So mm -hmm. kind of bringing that connection that what you do on land does have an impact on our water. So trying to get that to make sure that everyone's doing their part. So we also have a saying of like, be part of the solution, not the pollution. So yeah. kind of getting that out. I love that. Be a part of the solution, not the pollution. Yes, very catchy. So now you'll yeah. always remember. Yeah, that's great. And really, you know, Earth Day is every day and that just that kind of mindset applies, you know, every day as well. Yeah. Um, so, so within about a mile is um, within the watershed. Oh yeah, like I mean, even if you think, because in Roanoke here we have the Upper Roanoke River watershed. Mm -hmm. So even here, though, we're also impacting like the Lower Roanoke River watershed basin too, and then eventually travels to the Albemarle Sound, which is just north of the Outer Banks. So even things that we're doing way up here has an impact right down there in like North Carolina. Then of course here locally, yeah, even a mile away has an impact onto the Roanoke River. Wow. So I know I walk and run with my dog a lot along the greenway and always make sure I pick up the poop. So, um, so that's part of that too, I guess. Yes, which is actually an interesting fact. All those Muttmet stations that you see on the Greenway was mm -hmm. because they did source tracking um, with the water quality samples and found that it had high concentration of um, pet waste feces from dogs. So they were finding that all the bacteria in there was a major component of people not picking up after their pets. So yeah. that's why all those Muttmets are now in place. And there's other ways for bacteria to get into our waters, but that was the number one, especially in urban, wow. having that kind of ownership. So I'm glad that you use them and you see them and that you're doing your part because that was one of the problems. So thank yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And thank you all and to the city for providing the mutmits because I try to remember my bags, but I don't always. Oh yeah. And it's just, it's a good reminder again, like how everything is connected and it's picking up your dog's poop is more than just preventing someone from stepping in it. It's really about the health of our, the water ecosystem. Oh yeah, exactly. That's really good point. So I'll just take a, a, another quick uh, moment for anyone joining us. So um, I'm Megan Stewart here with the Girl Scouts. We're doing an interview as part of step one of the Eco Advocate Badge for our ambassadors. And with me today is Daniel DeHart, Environmental Specialist for the City of Roanoke Stormwater Division. So um, at, we're about halfway through and uh, at the end, we'll open it up to questions. So you can either feel free to type in questions you may have right now for Danielle, or you can wait till the end, but I uh, just wanna encourage you all to participate if you're, if you're with us today. All right, Danielle, so are you familiar with the Leave No Trace seven principles? And if so, how do you practice them in your work? Yes, yeah, so I am familiar with those. And I have to say with my work for every day today would probably be principle number one of plan and protect, uh, or plan and prepare, I just, and protecting is also a good quality you know? So anytime with our volunteer groups that we go out, you want to make sure that they know what they're getting into because a lot of times they're not familiar with the stream or the area. So kind of giving that awareness to and then when we're at the stream, um, another principle of like putting everything back in its place. So anytime we collect the benthic macroinvertebrates, we're putting them back into the ripple in which we found them. Um, and also too, if anyone brings like snacks with them because it's a long day to pick up that trash when they go. So just make sure you have your whole plan in sets. So that way there's kind of like this no surprises concept. So that way everybody knows what's going on. So there's no surprises and then just overall safety. Yeah, that's great. Seven, so uh, the no, leave no trace principles are a big part of the Girl Scouts um, badge program as well. So it's just always nice to know, again, like what we're talking about with the dog poop and everything, it's like how just everything's connected and can overlap. Um, okay, so um, 
The badge program for the Eco Advocate describes the following skills as important to being an effective advocate. So the ability to run a meeting, speaking in public, organizing events, and recruiting people. Do you use some of these skills more than others in your current job? And if so, do you have any tips on how to be effective in those areas? I'd say I use a little bit of all of those, but the number one is probably just like organizing and organizing events in general. We do a wide variety. And like I said, I do like education and outreach. So we have internal cleanups with our field staff that we clean twice a year at various places around the city near streams. We have a one like large public participation cleanup that we do and partnership with Clean Valley Council, which is a local nonprofit here in Roanoke, and then Deschutes Brewery, which is really nice. So they're like a big help to push that. And then also with training for organizing. So just making sure um, you're getting everything in place because that can be like big events at one time and just kind of going through what you need to do. It's having like a checklist I always have and then just mm -hmm. checking the boxes each time and then making sure you know where those contacts are for each event because it's kind of overwhelming at times to so think of safety and, you know, location and things like supplies that you might need. So that's why like checklists are my life. So that is my suggestion, have a checklist. That's really good advice on just about anything in life too. Yes. <laughs> um, how did you overcome any difficulty you may have had initially in those areas? Just always ask questions because if you're kind of thrown a project, you might not know, like don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, and a lot of those things too, where it's like a big city cleanup, like there's so many departments that you have to work with and then like asking, or finding out who you need to work with. So it's kind of always lessons learned and you might not get it right the first time and then you just keep on asking and then just keep on remembering what you've learned each time. I love that. That's also great advice. Mm -hmm. Ask lots of questions, always have a checklist, can't go wrong and be prepared. Yep. Girl Scouts know about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so finally, do you have any last thoughts or words of advice you'd like to share as um, both I pursue my efforts and um, some of our Girl Scouts will pursue efforts towards becoming an eco-advocate. I think it's always great to be curious and then just kind of asking those questions again and finding out like what your passion is um, through that and just kind of being adventurous and then looking to local groups of how you can get involved. Like here in Roanoke, we have the Upper Roanoke River Roundtable and Clean Valley Council. So just keep on doing that research until finding what you're passionate about. I love that. Thank you for that, Danielle. And thanks so much for joining us. So we are at the end of the interview, the formal interview. If you have any questions for Danielle, please comment those now. Um, she has also agreed to be an interview candidate to any ambassadors that would like to um, talk to Danielle as part of their eco advocate work. Um, certainly, you'll want to do some research. That was another maybe piece I, I could have spoken to at the beginning. Uh, I, I sat down and made a list, kind of did some brainstorming of the different organizations I'm aware of in the city and um, some of the people that I know. Um, but you also don't have to know a person to reach out. A lot of um, um, specialists in this area are happy to, to meet with the girls and, and meet with you and to do an interview. Um, also at the beginning, you saw my um, interview sheet. And so that's a really important uh, preparation step as well. Like make sure before you go to your interview, um, you Google those possible ideas and then draft them up yourself to kind of um, get a feel for it and, and maybe practice with your parent um, to see if the flow makes sense and if you might have any um, follow-up questions. My uh, Siri thought I was talking to her. <laughs> Something I just said. <laughs> All right. Well, Danielle, thank you so much. Happy Earth Day. Yes, thank you. Happy Earth Day to you as well. And happy Earth Day to everyone out there today and um, happy Leader Appreciation Day. Thank you to all of our Girl Scout leaders and Michelle, thank you for getting your girls out in Colorado to pick up trash. It's really inspiring. And um, we're gonna go ahead and end it and we wish you all a great day. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone, bye. Bye.